Hey, welcome back to Woodworking with Wes. Today, we're again here with Jared, our professional painter in resident, who likes, likes to help us with some of our questions about painting. And I had a big one that I wanted to ask him about lead paint. I bought an old piece of furniture that I wanted to do a furniture flip on it, but it was painted white, it was all crusty, and I was worried. And so, Jared's going to help us today to learn what lead paint is and how to deal with it. Jared. Thank you. Talk to us. Thank you, Wes. Most paint cans, spray paint, anything that has to do with paint has a warning about lead paint. And most people don't know what that means. A lead paint is serious business. You can get really sick. Let me tell you a story. Someone not too far from here, they bought this nice old house and they sanded it all. They took their uh, moldings out, took it outside and sand it all off with electric sander and then blew it off in the yard and kept doing it, the family started getting sick. Oh no. Uh, they finally went to the doctor, uh, the baby was sick, all the kids were sick, and they all had lead poisoning. Oh no! But now the EPA had to get involved and, and go through the lead mediation, costing tens of thousands of dollars. Oh no. Wow. They had to seal off their house so they were working with plastic. They had to hire a huge amount of money to clean out and remove all the dirt because the lead dust went everywhere. Oh, man. Worst thing you can do is sand the lead dust and make that dust go everywhere. It's uh, very dangerous and causes serious problems. I've heard about the lead paint problem with kids. It causes brain damage. Is that correct? Yes, it does. Wow. Uh, sometimes kids like to chew on... That's what I heard about it. They chew on old window sills as the uh, kids they, breaking their teeth. They, they, uh, well, there's a sweetness. The yes. lead has a sweet flavor oh, to wow. it. Uh, in fact, the Egyptians, way back, they didn't live very long, used to put a little bit of lead in their food as a sweetener. Oh, wow. <laughs> anyway, no, lead, lead is a, a serious, uh, a big no-no to be careful of. Now, as a contractor, someone doing lead paint, they have to go through all kinds of hoops and regulatories. I have printed off uh, from OSHA the regs and the requirements that have to do with pages lead Pages and pages and pages oh, hundreds and of pages. pages. Detailing and, and making it extremely complicated. Um, before I could do lead work here where I work, I had to do a report of exactly how I would do it. It took me a while before I got it approved. But I simplified it down to, oh, about 30 pages. <laughs> okay. But we're gonna do the highlights. Now, being a homeowner or working doing it yourself, you don't have all those regulations, but you wanna be careful. There's a few simple things that you need to do that'll make working with lead-based paint safe. Okay, okay. Let's, let's find out about that first. Yes. <laughs> I've come up with six basic rules for working with lead-based paint. Rule number one, never dry sand lead-based paint surfaces. I think your story just told us that. <laughs> There's ways, we'll, we'll go into that in more detail. Two, don't dry scrape lead-based paint surfaces. Oh, okay. Three, Minimize dust generation and dispersion during any work involving lead, ba lead painted surfaces. Surfaces. Always wet clean after working on lead based paint surfaces. Cleaning using a damp rag. Never dry, don't blow it, don't sweep it. Make sure it's wet. Oh, okay. That's good to know. But do not use a heat gun to melt the lead paint surfaces. Oh yeah, I've seen that done with paint before. Okay, yeah, it move, it's really nice. You don't want the fumes. Now there's a heating tool you can use, uh -huh. but not a heat gun. Okay. And rule number six, no food, no drink, don't eat any of those who smoke, don't smoke. <laughs> Be sure you're cleaned off and don't have any food around there. Because when I, I work, sometimes I like to have a drink and I'll eat a snack. But when, it, when I'm working with lead-based paint, that's got to go. That's got to go away. Okay. Lead-based paint was used um, in the earlier 
century all the way up into 1978, even 1980s. Wow, that late. Uh, they outlawed it in 1978, but then they used whatever product they had. So newer homes could still have some. They have lead paint testers where you can buy it at your hardware store. It says lead paint, lead paint testers is like $9. There's a glass vial inside, a little tube, you crush it, break it, and then you squeeze it out and you touch the um, product. I have an old uh, an old window piece, and uh, th this is, uh, I bought this online. Okay. I think Amazon somewhere. A uh, Amazon would have test kits? You yes. Think? Okay. You check on Amazon, they have right. test kits. Uh, I bought a package, because I use a lot of them, so I bought a pack of 100. Okay. Uh, and it was a lot cheaper than $9 for every two or three. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> uh, and this is not as accurate, but you just, you get it wet. And then you touch a place and see it, it doesn't change. I, I got to put my glasses on here so I can tell. So I know that this is not lead paint. And I go up here and I show this is not lead based paint. So I'm pretty good here. But if I go in here and I touch a spot, then there's a just a little trace amount of lead somewhere back in there and there's a, it's starting to pink a little bit so there's some lead paint so it goes darker it goes darker and, and it kind of turns red purple i see that see, okay it, i used this earlier it just oh turns yeah purple. i can see that let's have our video come in there real close and look at those two and look at the red end on that and you can see how that turns dark and that one has been exposed to lead paint, is that correct? Yes, this one has been exposed earlier. This will turn purple a little bit over time. If I put it right on top of this, nothing would happen because it's I not lead-based paint on top. But behind it, there there's small trace amounts. I if see. it's a lot of lead, it'll turn purple faster. I see, okay, all right. So, uh, so once we, I, I usually work on the assumption that there's a little lead in anything old. Okay, that's a good choice, um, a good assumption, I should say. These are not accurate to 100%. If you want to be accurate, you can mail it and test it, uh, and it, it, they charge so much per sample, and they'll tell you exactly how much lead is in there. What I do is just assume that it, that it has lead. And now, if I wanted to finish it, I do not sand it. Right. Absolutely, you told you us that. You had a question. Well, okay, let's say I bought an old house, and I was worried that it had lead paint. Um, would I, could I just chip off a little bit of paint and send it in? Is that the way to do it? Or how would I do that? You can, but you don't need to. I see. Lead paint is safe when it's undisturbed or if it's painted over. If it's maintained, you know, if your house had lead paint in it, then it's okay as long as you don't disturb it. When you ah. paint over it, it's okay. Okay, well, let's, let's not get that ahead of our shelves right there. We're just trying to find out about the lead paint. So let's get back to our testing. So I've got this test, and I, I, I tested it. It has just a little bit of lead, so I want to be careful. But if I want to sand this down or scrape it, I would say I need to scrape some of this off. A scrape works really good. Then I use this uh, chemical called H2O, a little Ooh. water. All right. All it is is a little water. And then I can scrape because there's no dust particles in the air. This it weighs it down, and if I don't go crazy with it, I just go. I scrape a little bit. Then I'm not creating any any dust. But make sure, Good make and sure wet. it's wet. Good and wet. Okay. And then I scrape it. And then if I need to, uh, when I need to clean up, I use a paper towel, and I and I wipe it up and I put it in a bag seal the bag and, and throw it away. That's a scraping method. Okay. If I need to sand, sometimes you have to sand it. Right. Make sure it's wet. And then you can sand it as long as there's no dust. I see. Now I, when, in order for me to do this, I tested it and I had to wear one of those machines that would suck in the air and tell you how much. Mm -hmm. And I did several samples, and following this method, I had a very small amount uh, below, it's called below the action level. Ah. So I didn't have any issues. So if you do follow this and keep your thing wet, 
you shouldn't you wouldn't you shouldn't have any problems at all. I see. And then if there's still lead paint, which there probably is, by the time you get it ready, that's okay. You wipe it clean, then you prime it and you paint over it, and you're good to go. I see. I probably wouldn't uh, use a baby crib. <laughs> But most furniture around the house is safe. If it's covered and taken care of, if it's starting to peel somewhere, you need to take care of it. Mm -hmm. um, you, can, you can scrape and peel as long as you've got it wet and moist, and as long as you have a wet rag to wipe it all up and then throw the whole thing away in a bag. I see. I may be getting ahead of you a little bit, but what if I wanted to take the paint off? What about a, like a stripper? If I put on a chemical stripper, um, very good. Uh, you can use a paint stripper. Yes. Um, I'll just, just grab one real quick. Okay. Right. And again, at Amazon, you can just pick out any paint stripper or your um, hardware store. Hardware store. Okay. And uh, what I do is I pour it in a container. Okay. And I get a disposable brush. Right. And I paint it on. And I don't paint it back and forth like paint. I paint it on real thick okay. in one direction because I want it to thick and seal itself. Okay. And then I wait till 15 or 20 minutes and scrape it off. Now be very careful that everything you use in the area, like I'd work on this paper, everything here, I'd fold this paper up, throw it away, put it in a bag, and take it out into the trash. Okay. You don't want this lead paint anywhere. You want to bag it up and throw it away. Okay. All right. Well, like I said, I might have got it a little ahead of myself, ahead of you there. Oh, but, that's right. But no. I was curious just because it crossed my mind. Like I say, I have a piece of furniture that I want to do a furniture flip on. It's got a real thick paint, and so I'm paying attention because okay. I probably got lead paint on it. It probably does. Now, a lot of people use uh, heat guns. And that's really nice to move the paint. You get it all hot, and you peel it off. Do not use a heat gun with lead paint. Base you were talking about that because it'll create an odor, and uh, you you'll inhale it and breathe and that it. That has lead in it. That has lead. You don't Ooh. want to do that. Okay, very good. However, the infrared heaters you can heat it with an infrared light, and that doesn't create the fumes. vapors. Okay, and then you can melt it using uh, infrared. And we've done this before. Um, to remove paint. Sometimes if, if there's so much paint on there, the more times you paint it, the more chance it is to uh, peel off. By the time you get 20, 30 coats of paint wow, on yeah. something old, <laughs> then it starts peeling off. And then you have to remove some of the paint and, you'll ha and then you'll get into the lead paint. So you want to remove it carefully using infrared heater or scraping it with a wet sand. There's also a product or a tool, a fest tool. Uh, Makita has a tool that sucks it up. Now, you still get dust everywhere using this, but it has a way, when you turn it on, it has a HEPA vacuum, so it, it sucks out all the, um, the dust. But if you're careful enough and keep it moist, you can use a sander. You would this still is the want only to, way. You would still want to keep it moist, though. It, yes, or you've got to, if you're in a room, put plastic around everything and secure it. Uh -huh. If I wear my mask. Oh, I see. Yes, uh huh. Put this on, goggles, wear a mask, then I can sand with this and I will get very little dust. But then I have to go through and tear everything down and wipe all the walls clean. So it's a lot of work to use if you want to sand it. Okay. So if you're doing a whole room, then you can sand it with the with the special tool, wearing your mask, or if it's a smaller area, you can, you know, just keep it keep it wet. Use a, a squirt bottle. Sometimes I'll use a garden pump sprayer because I don't like squirting all the time, and then uh, then I can sand it. Um, I can put a sanding sealer over it or uh, you know, a heavy primer and then I can lightly sand that again as long as, as long as I'm not sanding into the lead paint. Lead paint can be uh, a serious issue. If you don't know what you're doing, it, it could cause some problems. But if you're careful and you follow those six steps, um, then it's, it's not a problem and it, you can be safe. Okay. Well, Jared, thank you so much for cluing us in on some of the things we need to watch out for 
especially if you're working in an older home with an older piece of furniture or anything like that that you suspect might have lead paint, start first with their testing. Make sure you're safe. Make sure you don't just decide that it's okay. Make sure you're okay. Jared, thank you so much. Thank you, Wes. And we'll see you next time on Wordworking with Wes. <laughs>